5.30. Um, I guess we'll start the public works meeting. Uh, we'll call who do we have online here? Do we have everyone online? Oh. Marcus and Betty are online. Marcus, Betty, is, is Rose? Doing the, okay. All righty, we'll start out with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we've got a pretty big uh, crowd here. I think we're going to just do a quick introduction to everyone here. My name is Dean Decker. I'm the older person from the 6th District and uh, Chairman of the Committee. Um, Ryan Sorensen, Alderman District 8, Vice Chair of the Committee. Start old time. Martin Savaglio, District 5, Alder person. Oh. David Diebel, Director of Public Works. Mike Vanderstein, Mayor. Ken King, Nathan Spirits Bright. Eric Hagman, Nathan Spirits Bright. Brent Legion, Nathan Spirits Bright. Gary Klein, Nathan Spirits Bright. Pat Belichick, City Planning Director. Todd Wolf, City Administrator. Rob Wolf, Rob Wolf. Rob Wolf, Rob Wolf. Don Sokolowski, Department of Public Works. Tony Lewis, Department of Public Works. Okay. And Betty Ackley just messaged the group. She's online as well. Okay. Betty Ackley is online. And we also have uh, Dom's Cameron, uh, Chuck Adams, and let's see who else. And who's? And Mark Woodstock from Wastewater. All righty. Uh, we'll start out with uh, 2.1 approval of minutes. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, resolution 3.1, resolution 82-20-21, September 8th, 2020. 4.6 resolution authorizing enter into a master development agreement with Stonebrook Crossing LLC. I will move for approval. Well, oh. Direct, start with Director Weevil, I guess. Oh, sure, yeah. I was okay. going to read the amendment. Okay. Sorry. That, that's quite all right. I, basically, what you have in front of you is the master development agreement. Uh, this has been a, a, a result of negotiations between Warner Homes Development as well as city staff. And uh, we have Director of Planning, Chad, in, in the audience, as well as Ryan, myself, uh, City Administrator Wolf, as well as, I believe, uh, City Attorney Adams is on the line. And um, I know there's a couple of minor amendments that will be needed to be made this evening yes. in regard to this. But this really basically sets the terms and conditions and the understandings between the city and, and, and Warner Homes in terms of the master development agreement of the Stonebook Crossing subdivision. Mainly, we're, from the public works standpoint, we're looking at the infrastructure, the roads, the sewer system, water mains, and the storm drainage uh, resulting from this, this, this development. And this agreement lays out the responsibilities, location, and so forth, as well as what those final improvements should be prior to the city accepting those. So the responsibility will be on the developer to install this, build this to our standards and our specifications, ultimately, which will become part of the city infrastructure network. So that's just a broad overview. And I guess what I'd like to do, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay, if, if Chad or, or our city administrator Wolf have any further um, 
things they'd like to add. Uh, Ross from sure. Werner Homes here is, is here to also be in attendance to add to the conversation, as well as I'd like to also, um, Attorney Chuck Adams spent a considerable amount of time assuring that um, the right terms and conditions and things would be accounted for in this agreement, so. I would note I heard a motion to approve the RO, but there should be a second so you have the item on the floor to discuss. Is there a second for the motion? I'll second it, Betty. Okay. Okay. Now go ahead and discuss it. And then when we get around to it, I'll read the amendment for everybody so that the rest of you don't have to. Okay. Mr. Wolf. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to let the committee know that this has been a project that we've been working on for quite a while. Uh, it's a very positive, again, it's a great relationship and partnership that we're, we've been working on. We need uh, single family development. And if you remember, this originally <clears throat> started with um, a parcel of land, there's a park, and we were looking to move it and change it. And um, the, the group was able to maintain its location. And we're actually adding some park to that area. And Ross and his team basically were able to adjust the roads and structures of the, of the homes to accommodate and work around it. So for me, this is something that I'm, I'm very passionate about. I'm th I think that it's another good example of how the city is working with businesses and the growth of the city. And this also partakes into, I believe it's our TID 18. So this is, a, again, it's gonna show some, some development that the city needs and the community needs, and it's gonna help our, our TID 18. So thank you. Chad? Thank you. So just kind of mimicking what Alder, uh, City Administrator Wolf said, um, Alderman Wolf, uh, we, this is, as Dave said, this has been a long process. The, um, I want to thank Ross for his time and effort working with us to get through this. As Dave said, this typically in the past, the city has done the infrastructure and this is uh, putting the uh, honest back on the developer to do so. Um, this is a, a major project for us. It'll be 134 lots. Um, it'll provide us with some opportunities for uh, single family housing in this time in the city, probably the first time in 15 years, like 15, 18 years, Rolling Meadows subdivision on the north side was the last one. And then a small addition that they've done with about 10 or 12 homes, maybe or so down on 14 homes down there. So this is, this is a good step in the right direction as we try to balance out our apartments and our single family and providing more opportunities to bring people here for jobs and stuff in the community. So thank you. Alrighty, um, any other discussion from the alders? Any, uh, I just wanna make it that I, I want to thank the staff for all the all your hard work in this. This has really been this is this is this is a positive. This is a real positive for the city that we actually have some single family homes coming up in the you know, and uh, in a development like this add to our tax base. Uh, so I'm I'm really excited about it. So um, without further, I guess we have to vote on. We have to amend it now, or do we? Have to so uh, I'm going to move to amend uh, this document. And I will ask um, city attorney to read the aforementioned yeah. motion. So the amendment would be to amend the RO so as to adopt the most recent version of the agreement, a copy of which is included with all changes noted in board docs, but with the following additional changes beyond those indicated in board docs. A, to amend the depth of the asphaltic binder course in Article 7, Section B, Paragraph 3, from one and three quarters inches to two and a quarter inches. B, to amend the depth of the asphaltic surface course in Article 7, Section B, Paragraph 7, from two and a quarter inches to one and three quarters inches. C, to amend the main or largest paragraph of the legal description in Exhibit A as follows. First, to remove the comma in the fourth line after the word dense. Second, to remove the phrase, quote, feet to a point in the easterly extension of the north line of Romer Pond Estates, a recorded subdivision in said southeast quarter, end quote, that is from lines seven and eight. 
Third, to change the distance listed as 412.97 feet in line 20 to instead read 361.16 feet. Fourth, to indicate in the 23rd line that the boundary line shall travel along the north line of lands described in volume 1061, page 876 and 877, rather than the south line. Fifth, to indicate in the final two lines, lines 43 and 44, that the boundary line as it returns to the point of beginning shall, rather than traveling east 33.00 feet to the point of beginning, shall travel uh, north 90 degrees, zero minutes, zero seconds east along said south line, 33.00 feet to the point of beginning. And D, to amend said legal description so as to append the following language at the end, quote, together with those lands lying between said meander line and the center line of said stream. All right, thank you, Chuck. Um, did we get a second on that amendment? We need a second on the amendment. I would second that. Okay, we have a motion uh, to, to, so now I guess a uh, second. Uh, Vote on the uh, amendment first. All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. That Betty said aye too? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Now we'll go back to the original motion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Move on to resolution 3.2, or 3 resolution 8320, September 8th, document 4.7, resolution authorizing entering into an agreement with Making Spirits Bright Incorporated for use of Ever Evergreen Park and the Quarry View Center for the annual Making Spirits Bright drive through holiday lights display. Uh, I believe we have some people here from Making Spirits Bright. Um, also, so start it with the chair. Or sorry, sir. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to defer to Joe Curlin, our Parks okay. Superintendent of, of Parks and Forestry. He, he's been working quite extensively with the Making Spirits Bright group. But this 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 is not new. We've we've had this agreement in place. Um, very successful um, event that uh, provides great community uh, support through the food bank and uh, it's been really popular. So what we, what we wanna do is, and I think Making Spirits Bright is here as well, that we give them a chance to speak on some of the needs for these changes because of the growth of the event as well as um, the, the, the challenges in terms of trying to move in and out at such a, a tight time frame. And again, um, the department supports this, these changes that are in front of you this evening uh, but again, I'm going to defer to Joe here, and then okay. I think it would be appropriate to maybe allow Making Spirits Bright to um, have an opportunity to explain themselves as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David. Yeah, uh, David said it uh, very well. There, there's, as you see on the IFC, there's six changes. Um, probably one of the biggest one is is just extending um, the the time that they have to to get out of the park. And, and one one thing I really want to stress is. And that, that in no means means they're going to drag their feet trying to get out. And, and the Department of Public Works has either even made a commitment to work with the group to make sure that um, they get out of the park in a timely fashion, um, especially when there's snowfall that we can, um, uh, you know, actually get out and, and, and groom, keep grooming the trails. Uh, we've, we've worked hard for the last seven years. I came into this after the first year, and we've been working both with Making Spirits Bright and, and, and uh, the ski groomers that volunteer their, their, their time to go out and, and, and groom the ski trails. Um, it's, uh, every year we go through things, um, how we can make things better. Um, this agreement is really a five-year agreement, basically with just a few changes from the last five-year agreement. Uh, first few years, we really try to go through things. We're always constantly trying to improve for both making spirits bright. And, and providing skiing during that time. And that's a difficult time. Last year there wasn't even snow, but we are providing areas where they can ski. The main concern tonight is just passing this so um, we have an agreement, uh, a five-year agreement with Making Spirits Bright. 
Um, if I have any, any questions on these, I'd be happy to answer them, or we can refer to making spirits bright. I guess my, I'll start out with the first question. Is, um, I, I, the one the question that I have is, when when they came to us last year, we had the issues with the skeet, and I guess the direction of, of from from us was that the two groups got together. I Correct. understand that that has not happened. Correct. Um, that was right before. So we were like um, um, they are were already set for last year. Yeah. So when this was brought, it was brought in November, mm -hmm. and then it was sent back, like you said. Yeah. Hey, could the the Really, Mr. Van Akron, yeah. could you work with Mr. Van Akron to, to work on some of his concerns? Well, that's November. That's their busy time. They really yeah. had, did not have that opportunity to, to do anything at that time besides get ready for, for the, the activity itself. Um, then later on into the year, we all know what happened mm -hmm. with COVID. But um, um, I do have with me tonight an email that was sent out by Jerry Plain. Uh, with Making Spirits Bright to Mr. Van Akron. That email was never replied to, and that was set in April. And I sat on it for quite a bit of time, waiting for a response, and then I actually forgot about it. So, I mean, we gave him plenty of time to respond, and there was no response from him. Okay. I guess, but just, just the one response, there was no after no, no follow-up or anything like that with him at all? No, no phone calls or anything? No, no. I guess in my opinion, that I'm a little disappointed in the committee for, or for that. I really wish you would have, because that was what what our from our intention was that we that you that, that they meet that they that they meet and try to work this out because we feel like Solomon here. I, I can I can attest that what he's wanting is not something that can be worked out. Okay, he's asking way for way too much. Um, their main area um, area for. I mean, they wanted, he wanted them cleared out of that. The requests were, were not something that were going to happen on, on their part. Okay. Well, I guess, um, do we, uh, do, does, uh, before they come up, do we have any? Okay. Um, my name is Greg Liebig. I'm uh, vice president of Make It First Bright. Okay. I'm also the co-chair of the production crew that okay. does the setup of, of the event. Um, I've been blessed with by sticking my head, gopher head out of the whole gopher hole back in 2010 uh, to be a volunteer uh, for this event. And uh, this is prior to, we started up in 2011 is when our first year was. So I've been involved since, since before day one. Um, the event has always been meant to be a family friendly, family event for the entire community and, and raise food for, the, for the, the food banks. This year, due to the COVID stuff, we're probably the only show in town, to be honest with you, the way it's, way it's yeah. working out. Um, I worked quite heavily with Steve Shar and Danny. Uh, used to be the parks uh, guy there. And we went through the first couple of years. <laughs> first year, we had some skiing done. There was no groomed trails at that time. People kind of skied around. We were done by, by December 15th. Second year, we were open to the 31st of, 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 of uh, December. Because of that extended stay, we really wanted to make an impact and, and trying to figure out a way to work with the city, work with the skiers, and come mm -hmm. up with a way that we can do the trail all the way around. At that point in time, the third year, we ended up putting, uh, the Boy Scouts put a bridge in down by uh, Area 6, which allowed the skiers to go, you know, the groomer to go across the little, little culvert that was there, mm -hmm. which that was cool. And... Uh, so I, I've maintained the maps of the whole park. So I, I, we adjusted everything accordingly. And, and our goals were always to allow skiing around the whole park, always. In hindsight, last year, I talked to Joe. Joe, originally we wanted to put all the electrical stuff way back in the near the tree line. And uh, unfortunately, you can't see me smile because I got a mask on. <laughs> but uh, um, so we... Jim got upset last year because in November he thought, well, you, you put cords over our trail. I said, no, we didn't. You didn't follow the map that we already had set up. So he got angry about that. But I, I showed him, and, show, and, and uh, Joe and I met out in the park, and I showed him where the trail goes from the bridge as it curves through, and we made sure that there's no, no, no cords are in the way. There's one area in the park that makes it very difficult to do any grooming, and that's, that's from 
down by the river, between the bridge and Buckman or whatever. And there's really not much you can do with that part at all. Going through the history some more, um, uh, the city has done some good jobs trying to, trying to get a trail cut through the, up the hill through Camp Evergreen area, up around Caneland, and then we can ski that whole area too, and we make sure that all of our displays allow that, the area for, for a groomed trail. The, uh, the thing I found the most thing, working with Steve, with Steve Shar was, was, was pretty good. Jim has never showed up at the park mm. with us, ever. Our hands have been out to him for, you know, forever. Um, we want to we want to work with him, but you have to have to have somebody on both sides willing to work together to hold your hand out to, to, to communicate. And what we're finding is is even even through our experiences with his brother, who's another fellow Rotarian, um, he told me during Christmas time and Thanksgiving time, most people don't talk about politics at the dinner table. He doesn't talk about making sure it's bright with his brother because of the same problem. It's just some animosity has been built up over the years. Unfortunately, things change. And we want to make things you know, change for the better. And we wanted to, we thought it was a really cool idea, and we still think it's a cool idea to have skiers be able to ski in the park safely during the event. Now, it's not going to be necessarily a 12 foot wide, you know, yeah. shushing trail, whatever, you know, but we're going to have areas that can do that. And they're talking about the, the practice areas. That's probably the biggest bone of contention that we've had with, with Mr. Van Akron. Um, and one, one solution was, you know, down by the ball diamond. And he didn't think of so much of that. And then, uh, then we thought about area four, the grassy area, not the parking lot. Mm -hmm. The parking lot is used for staging. Um, but there's a grass area there, and there's also a hill back behind there. That was part of our proposal we sent to, sent to him in April. You know, hey, what can we do, you know? When you get zero response, and you worked for 10 years trying to make improvements, how much more do you want us to do to reach out to somebody for help? I mean, we propose things every year. We talk to, the, talk to Steve and talk to them. Um, and we really try to make a difference. We obviously, the show's obviously gotten a lot bigger than we thought it was ever, ever would have. Ben, it's where I think uh, Travel Wisconsin Magazine has I think third, rated third in the state last year for events like this, mm -hmm. for being relatively new. We want to make a difference for the community. We want to make an impact for the food bank, which we have. And we want to make a place for skiers to ski safely during the show. So, you know, the asking for the additional time this is part of this proposal is just to allow us to get out of there uh -huh. safely too. We've been last year was fine. Last year, and we've never been over our, our, our days to be in the park. Trust me. After Eric and I, and, and uh, he's a co-chair of our of my committee mm -hmm. uh, for the design setup people, we don't want to be there anymore after 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 December if we don't have to be. So we work really hard to get out of there safely in a hurry, and the weather's been good. The, the problem we had with agreement before was that the contingencies were such that if we had bad weather, ice, which we've had in the past, mm -hmm. makes it difficult to get out. So we just wanted to have that cushion to allow us to do that flexibility-wise. Um, and we'll do what we can you know, to, to uphold ourselves to the agreement and, again, work with the skiers to make sure that we still have what we said we're going to do, we, we will do. Okay. Uh, uh, um, thank you for allowing us to speak a little bit tonight. I'm Jerry Plain. I'm the president of Making Spirits Bright as well as the steering committee chair. Um, you can tell the passion from hearing Greg talk about everything that we've done. Um, we have tried our best to work um, with the ski groomers. Um, as Joe reiterated, he has as well through the um, city. There is no more that we are able to do without compromising our event. Um, to Joe's comment before, um, some of the things that, that Jim is asking for just aren't possible. He would like us to totally vacate what we consider our headquarters and where food collection is right now. It's just not an option. Um, 
as far as the extension that we're looking for, it's just an insurance policy for us. Greg has already said, there's no way we're going to just sit back and relax every year knowing we have this extra time. After spending all but two weeks a year on this event, yes, we only take two weeks off in January. There's no way that we want to take more time than we have to when we're disassembling all of our displays at the end of the year. But if we'd have a terrible, terrible winter um, while we're in there, which we did about five years ago, where everything was frozen in, we just would like some insurance that we have a little extra time to work to get it all out. Um, I think Greg just said last year we were out in three or four days because there was virtually no frost, very little snow, so it was very easy. Additionally, we have fine-tuned our process year after year to the point that it does get more efficient with every year. So the extension, which is pretty much the basis of this new proposal, is just to give us a little bit more insurance, but we are not going to take advantage of it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I think you should know well, that the proposal you just state, that you, we had given excuse, originally. Could you, state, could you state your name, please? For the, Ken for King. Her. I'm sorry. Okay. Ken King, um, Making Spirits Bright. Um, I th the proposal that we had worked out because we needed a starting point to compromise, um, we still plan on implementing and there were some changes that were made. We had looked at extending the uh, one display, the tunnel, uh, to 200 feet instead of 100 feet. This is the 100 feet that the groomer needs to go through, okay? Uh, we are not extending that. Um, we are, uh, you know, that was a compromise that we felt would help move this process along. Um, we've also planned to move the uh, porta potties and the dumpsters uh, 12 feet in uh, area four closer so that it allows more ski area and grooming as well. So those efforts um, have been made on our part as, as a point that we would like to start. Um, the fact is, is we haven't, other than crossing at three locations with a groomer, have we stopped any winter recreation in that area? Snowshoeing still available, the bikers still go through there, um, and the skiers still use it. So it is still being utilized as a uh, public resource, and I think that should be um, noted as well. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of Sheboygan, the original chairman of the Cross Country Ski Trails. And I want to, you know, give thanks to all those ski trail groomers that we've had over the years that, that donate their time and, and made uh, that a popular activity in the park. But fortunately, the Rotary Club has brought another entity in. Making Spirits Bright is now part of the way that our community celebrates Christmas. And it does some great things to raise funds and for the food banks and food donations. So, you know, it's great to have all this activity and interest in the park. And I think that the Rotary Clubs have been very gracious in uh, uh, the things that they're willing to do to accommodate the ski trail activity to continue as much as possible. And I think that this contract should be approved and we'll continue to work with both groups the best the city can to keep uh, both of these activities going as much as we can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. All righty. Do we have a motion? I'll move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you all for coming. All right, move on. 3.3, 3. resolution 8420-21, document 4.8, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to extend the existing contract with Keel Sand and Gravel Incorporated for the transportation 
and disposition of Class A biosolids from the wastewater treatment plant. David, or is it? Is it? Oh. Sure. Uh, this is, as you read, uh, basically entering into a contract, ex basically extending the existing contract with keel, sand, and gravel. Uh, basically, as you, you might recall, we, in, we installed and purchased a, a drying, a dryer of our biosolids at our wastewater treatment plant. Previously, we used to haul the biosolid sludge to farm fields that would be ejected into farm fields. Now that we dry it, um, it becomes a class A product, which is uh, a much higher quality uh, product, and it's uh, not regulated nearly to the level of what we had in the past, the class B, for instance. So what we've done is this is, can be used on, as a fertilizer, and uh, Keel Sand and Gravel has been working with us to, to manage this, haul it off, and uh, reuse it. This, this contract basically will um, allow us to continue that and offer, obviously, renewals moving forward. Uh, what we're looking at is the new contract will pay us $5 per ton for the material, which is about $7,500 annually that we're getting now as revenue. Okay. In the past, we actually had to pay to haul this from the treatment plant to the farm fields, and it was hundreds of thousands of dollars that was at its expense to the plant. So this is a good deal. Um, and we still are able to retain some of the, some of the biosolids for our own uh, beneficial reuse. So um, would entertain or have uh, the committee, my, our, our request would be to uh, approve this contract. I'll move for approval. Do we have a second? Motion to made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Resolution number. Three, or 3.4, Resolution 85, 2021, September 8th, 2020, direct re re referral. Resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with J&H Controls to upgrade the automated automatic temperature control systems at the Sheboygan Police Department. David? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this evening, um, I have Mike Wilmis, Superintendent of Buildings and Grounds and Facilities and Traffic Control. And what I would uh, entertain is have him an opportunity to explain this in a little more detail, but this is basically upgrading the control systems and standardizing and matching what we have at City Hall as well as at our service building, building automation system. When uh, the police station was built, um, it wasn't um, at the time specified that it would be upgraded to this system. So um, Mike can explain some of the details of why this is needed. Some of the systems there are obsolete and need upgrades. Okay. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mike and okay. he can give you further detail. Great. Thank you, Director Beeble. Um, good evening, committee members. Um, tonight we're seeking authorization for the appropriate city officials to enter into contract with JNH Controls to upgrade the automatic temperature control system at the Sheboygan Police Department. Funding for this upgrade was included in the 2020 capital improvements budget. City staff has obtained and reviewed competitive bids for the automatic control system upgrade and determined the only bid from JNH controls meets all the requirements for the bid documents and is within the amount it budgeted. The reason for this upgrade is to replace an outdated and failing building automation system installed, as David said, in 2008. A benefit to this upgrade, it will integrate with the systems already installed at City Hall, Municipal Service Building, and the City uh, and the Senior Center. Um, we're also looking to expand, as David also um, explained, to involve more city buildings. So we're basically on one system, and with our maintenance personnel, we can basically go to one computer anywhere in the city and actually update and uh, manipulate and maintain um, the the HVAC systems and the building automation systems, including lighting, just like this building. 
Are there any questions that I can answer on this on this system? I'll move for approval. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, any other discussion on it? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have one uh, yes. question that I'd like to ask. Uh, what about security? Um, this is a, a more sensitive building than, say, City Hall. Uh, how do we make sure that we nobody breaks in and heats up the police department too high? So there, there's, there's actually two phases to this capital improvement budget. I believe, um, don't quote me on it, I think it's like a $195,000 complete budget. This is like what we're going to call phase one. The phase two portion of this is going to include the audio system and the access control system. And that access control system will also work, work with the cards. We're trying to work with, when we, when we start the access control system, we're kind of looking at using the access control to coordinate with the other city facilities, meaning city hall, um, county PD, we're trying to use that same kind of system throughout the uh, um, th throughout uh, the facilities and stuff like that. Um, the CCTV system, which would be the cameras, that's a standalone system already and does not need upgrading at this time. Any other discussion? Uh, oh. Yeah, I, I don't know if we quite, if I if I got my point across there. Um, sure. Is this secure? Is this system secure that no one could hack into it and raise the temperature quite easily? Um, are, are we? Is IT on that for us? Correct. Everything will. The how do you want to say the the whole scope of this project is to have the server sitting at City Hall on fourth floor. That way we that way it can be monitored and secured through um, our, our IT's uh, security system. Awesome. Thank you. Any other discussion? All righty. All's in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. All righty. 3.5. Uh, general ordinance number 2021. September 8th, 2020, document 6.6, .6, ordinance amending section 2-397 sub C, section one, regarding the duties and powers of the Director of Public Works. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm gonna to defer to Assistant City Attorney Thomas Cameron. I believe this is just updating and cleaning up our city ordinance to be more aligned with the state statutes um, over the years. Um, with the code, some things um, just weren't kept up to date, in other words, but I kind of let him explain some of this. Okay. Ultimately, it's we're trying to do is streamline some of our processes in terms of getting bids, going out for construction projects. Obviously, ultimate approval will come to council, but there, in the past, there's been quite a bit of um, what I would say multiple, multiple uh, steps that uh, are delaying some projects in terms of getting them all timely. So okay. let me, if that's okay. Sure. Thomas. Thank you, Director Beeble and uh, other person Decker. Um, yes, so this, this resolution, it adds um, sort of a total of four words into the director's powers. And it, it clarifies that when we're saying the duties and powers uh, prescribed by state statute, we mean those duties and powers prescribed by state statute for the Board of Public Works. And when, when you hear that initially, it might sound like we're taking away the, the power of the Public Works Committee, and that, that's not the case. There, there's a statutory Board of Public Works that's created, and um, it, it's also possible to delegate those, those specific powers, which relate to the superintendents of the public works uh, functions, so things like streets, and the oversight of issuing bids. Uh, this was a, a very specific provision that was included uh, in the uh, duties of the public works director between at least 1955 uh, and was taken out around 1975. Uh, so this is not, not a new concept. It's sort of a, a return to an, an old concept. And as Director Beeble was saying, the real, real meaningful difference is that this will allow the public works staff to go out to bid on 
on projects that are part of the, the capital campaign, that are part of the, the uh, capital improvement plan, uh, that are part of the budget uh, to go out to that without specific uh, public works committee approval of those bid documents, which will allow the, the timing of bids to be honed uh, and, and potentially lead to better bid results. Thank you, Thomas. Any other discussion? I'll move for approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, 3.5. General Ordinance 2021, September 8th, 2020, document 6.6, .6, Ordinance Amending Section 134-178 of the Municipal Code to more clear, clearly identify, identify the 8th Street bolt launch. Director Evil. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I think this ordinance, um, it, it currently does not include the 8th Street bolt launch. Uh, this will allow for us to officially designate these areas. One of the issues is that we're starting to get more and more launchings um, at, at the boat launch there, uh, which we do collect revenue, okay. uh, boat launch ramp fees and such. The, the other area, this will also um, not allow necessarily or basically say that these other areas such as there's an area at North Point that People launch at least small watercraft, such as a wave runner, jet ski, for instance. Um, they're really not supposed to be doing that. So therefore, if there is a violation, uh, a ticket could be issued in, in such a case. So this formalizes it. Um, it puts them in the code that these are the official areas. And if you use them, there's also a daily fee or an annual fee that needs to be paid in order to. To, to use these. Um, I would believe Joe, uh, if you have anything else to add, or Thomas has also worked on this okay. as well, updating this ordinance, but I'm trying to summarize it uh, as quickly as possible. Okay. Joe, did you have anything to add? One, oh. uh, Thomas? Go ahead, Thomas. So uh, at, at present, the, the launching site, uh, this, this section references the 800 block of Maryland Avenue. Uh, which which is the 8th Street boat launch, but no one describes that street that way anymore anymore, which leads to some some confusion in the code. Uh, so that that's the the real genesis of this. Um, in after the the ordinance was drafted, it came to staff's attention that the 1300 block of Niagara Avenue uh, is no longer owned by the city, uh, so that's no longer a boat launch. So we would we would recommend amending the ordinance to remove that. Uh, provision at the at the same time. Okay. Did you? I'll move for approval. Okay. Did you want to as a as amended or move? Oh, we have to move for approval and then we have to amend it. All right. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Move now. to amend as. Uh, for the, the adjustments Thomas Cameron uh, out. Okay. Second. Okay, well, I'll make a, uh, any other discussion? Well, the first we'll vote on the amendment. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes on that amendment. Uh, then we'll, now we'll vote on the uh, actual ordinance. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Item number four, discussion only, uh, puts in project update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this evening, we have some representatives from the Butson Sports Complex, um, a project that uh, we have uh, have heard before, and okay. um, they think they want to provide an update and potentially uh, maybe have some exciting news of trying to get some kickstart to this project, get some momentum. Um, this year, I can just say is that with the COVID situation, um, it became really apparent with 
um, them allowing their, their club activities and their programs to continue. There was a, a vast amount of relationship with the school district properties, which now are not available. So quickly working with Joe in the parks department, we were able to accommodate much of their fall programming on city parks this year. Um, albeit it's, it's, it's working, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's um, tight, but uh, it's a great relationship. But I think um, tonight you'll hear some proposals that I think are exciting. Um, we do have in the capital program right now, uh, we have $590,000 in, in the budget. Uh, that was earmarked uh, for the Butson Sports Complex at a future time. It's just been held in, in the capital plan for the opportunity to present itself. And I think tonight uh, the gentlemen here have a proposal. And um, if you don't mind, I'd like to turn the floor over and, and let them give you an update this evening. Sure. Go ahead. Thank you, David, and uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for having us here tonight, um, and everyone on the on the video as well. Um, thank you for allowing us to have an opportunity to discuss our project with you. Um, well, as, as David has indicated, a lot has happened, uh, obviously, with COVID, and obviously with some of the restrictions we've had with regard to uh, uh, the school district and properties and, and running our fall programming. It's It's been quite a challenge, to say the least, but... Um, I think David has fairly characterized it as we've been successful. Things are running smoothly uh, for now. Uh, we're hoping that will continue. Moving forward, uh, we do have some things that we'd like to update everyone about. Many of you on this call and many of you here tonight have heard this. And uh, I have to share this with you. Before our meeting tonight, uh, Ryan Sazma had a, had a word. And he had mentioned that uh, I, I remember when we started this process five years ago, uh, which struck me as a... Uh, 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 Somewhat ironic to hear that we're here to try to get the project kickstarted tonight. So uh, it was a very interesting comment. And uh, here, here's where we are, everybody, is, is with regard to uh, uh, this will be in your board docs. This is a, a project overview that was provided to you uh, uh, just basically to tell you a little bit about our project. When we had originally uh, presented this development to uh, the Common Council, and I believe this was some time ago, maybe a year ago or so, what we had had at that time was kind of a, a full build-out, something that included uh, uh, building all the phases and things we're going to talk about tonight. So where we've adjusted the plan a bit is we've come to the conclusion that we're going to try to get this project underway and continued with phasing of the various parts of it. And to, to kind of rewind a little bit, uh, at the outset, the Butson family had donated this particular property to uh, the city under a restrictive covenant in the deed that told the city that, yes, we're, we're glad to deed this to you, but in order to proceed, you're going to have to utilize this particular property for recreational purposes. Obviously, I think in most settings, everybody's going to characterize soccer and various other sports as recreational. So in keeping with that original integrity, that is, is what the original um, purpose was for deeding it to the city, we entered into a lease with the city over a long-term period. And I believe uh, Mr. Adams can tell us a little bit more about the specific date, but uh, we had a, a window that we needed to develop the project. And I think we're, we're, we're working towards that. And that's what this is really about. What we're trying to do is to provide, and it has always been presented in such a way that it isn't just about soccer. Um, obviously, with uh, uh, the formation of Butson Sports Complex, the name in and of itself indicates that it's a complex. It's utilized for soccer. Of course, it'll be utilized for other sports like football, lacrosse, rugby, all various types of uses. Uh, so that's what we have always envis envisioned the project to be and the develop to be and that's consistent with what we're going to be telling you about tonight. Now, with regard to our busy seasons, um, I think there's been a lot of talk about when uh, soccer is actually played and when the majority of the traffic occurs. And for us, the club is basically in a situation where the busiest times of the year are coming up on us right now. Uh, the fall seasons from September uh, roughly to <clears throat> the end of November. Uh, and the spring months of March, April, and May are very busy times for us. 
the project envisions that, and that's why it's been discussed as a multi-sport facility. <clears throat> the multi-sport facility aspect of it is during the not so busy times of soccer, perhaps, and I would tell you that it's generally a year round activity for us as best we can, but it provides us with opportunities. We can provide space for various other sports, for various activities. If you use your imagination, there's a lot of things we can do here. So when we look at it on balance, we think that uh, not only is it a soccer facility, but it's called Boots and Sports Complex for a reason, because it is a multi-sport type of approach. Um, some of the phases, I want to turn to page two of the project overview uh, to keep things moving along here, is when we look at the conceptual project plan, um, there are various phases, and you see phase zero, phase one, phase two, and phase three. I'm going to go over those very briefly. And phase zero, Dave Beeble had indicated to you that there had been some capital proceeds provided earlier. That's the 590000 that he referenced. Uh, that original phase zero summary activity was that we were going to provide on our original phase zero, as you can see in the diagram that's up on screen, is that we had two grass fields, uh, some amenities, and some parking. All right, and that was the original phase zero plan that we had talked about <clears throat> on multiple occasions with regard to previous presentations, whether it be to this board, whether it be to the Common Council, whether it be to the Redevelopment Authority. That's what we had showed. So in phase one was budgeted for 690,000. There are some capital amounts available for us. Phase one, obviously, when you look at the cost, it jumps up significantly. Phases one, two, and three are all expansions. Phase one, as you can see on screen, includes things such as uh, looking for the full 16 fields. It's looking for four turf, a dome, and various other parts. Phase two is an extension of that, and that's up on screen as well. Phase three, obviously, is a little bit further down the road, and you can take a look at uh, basically page three or the timeline that you've been provided in your board docs to get a timeline. When, is this, when are these things going to happen? Um, and the detailed timeline through 2037 is attached to your board docs. All right, we're not gonna obviously go through those things in their <clears throat> totality. But where we are is we have final details. We have a design concept that is pretty close to final. Uh, we have, in phase zero, uh, a revised plan that's part of your board docs. And that has been <clears throat> provided up on screen now. The new phase zero, or what I'll call the revised phase zero, goes from the two fields that you saw in the original design to the five. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't see that far, but it looks like one, two, three, there are multiple fields, let's call it, much more than we had in the original phase one. With regard to the phase zero, our budget hasn't changed, and we're confident, and once we have the capital outlay that Mr. Beeble had referenced available, we should be able to get excavation and work done on those particular sites to get that phase zero into play. And we're hoping we can move on that very, very quickly. How this is significant is obvious. We have more space. We have more opportunities. We have just much more space and much more playability here. And we were out at the site earlier with uh, Administrator Wolf to take a kind of get a visual. What did it look like out there? And I think Mr. Wolf can tell you a little bit about that visit. Um, but where ultimately we are on this is we are at a point now where we are prepared to go forward with phase zero. And it's significant, everyone, because two reasons. The first of which is that at some point when we've been, and to Mr. Sasma's comments, it's been a long time. And talking about concepts and talking about renderings and talking about drawings and talking about things that we look at in flyovers, and we look at on maps and so forth. Those are great things. At some point though, people want to see a shovel in the ground. They want to see progress. They want to see kids. They want to see sports. They want to see the activity that's part of that concept. That's where we are today. 
is we're prepared to move forward on, on that aspect of this. Where that also leads us, everyone, is when approaching capital campaigns, when approaching donors, when looking at support for your project, I think, and I think everybody in this room would agree, that it's absolutely critical to get a shovel in the ground, to show potential donors, prospects, people in our community, users, people who are on the facilities, that progress is being made. It's the momentum, it's the buzz, it is the things that go with getting a shovel in the ground, and that can be expressed to potential donors and prospects. So when you look at phase one, two, and three, and you see, well, each of those reference fundraising sponsors and grants, right? Well, the way to get to point B is to get to point A, A, B, C. The start of the project is to get a shovel in the ground on phase zero, and that's where we are today. When we look at the financing summary, I can let you read that for yourself. That's not something that you need me to explain to you. I mean, those numbers, they are what they are. However, I think we're ultimately where we are is now we're ready. Also in your board docs is a summary by phase. That document basically lays out phase zero, phase one, phase two, and three. Those things obviously you can read for yourself. Um, there's a lot of different things that go into each phase. Obviously the numbers on those increase substantially, but there's no way you get to one or two or three without first getting that shovel in the ground, getting some momentum, showing people that it's no longer a concept, it's no longer a drawing, it's no longer a rendering. It's real, it's there, and kids are using it, and processing is going to continue with regard to programming for soccer, for football, for frisbee, for rugby, for lacrosse, for all of those things. That availability is here now, and we're hoping we can get started on that. And we're here tonight to have questions from all of you. And what I'm going to do is turn it over to Mr. Wolf for a moment, who probably has a few things to add. And then seated to my right is Tony Cloco, the president of our club. He and I are here to answer questions, to respond to concerns from anyone, and answer whatever questions we have. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Administrator Wolf. Thank you. Thank you for all of that um, review of the past five years or 60 months. Mm -hmm. um, as you guys um, are fully aware, I've actually been involved with uh, RDA and Public Works from the, since the beginning of this project. Uh, the Butson property, um, as I outlined earlier, was donated to the city for a project like this. So basically what I want to do is I'm going to skinny down the, um, and not beat you guys with a shovel in the ground um, as we keep talking about. What we're going to do is we're taking $400,000 of the 590, and what we're looking to do is this fall, we're going to actually excavate, if I'm saying it properly. Um, we're, gonna, we're going to clean it up. We're going to actually do the phase zero, and we're going to get that shovel in the ground, and we're going to plant the grass so that in spring, we actually have fields for the kids to play on. And I think... I support this 100% because, you know, especially right now with the pandemic, we have, I think what slowed us down in the past five years is we kept trying to find out how are we going to find the money to get all the way to the, to the finish line. And I think what, what's happening is we got lost in the weeds because of the fact that instead of getting it started, as it was said before, you start with step A and go to B and C, is we need the kids to have a place to go and play, and we need it, the activity. We owe it to the kids, especially right now with the pandemic. We need social distancing. So we need people to be able to go outside. We need people to have a place to go play. And this isn't, excuse me, um, isn't just for, for soccer. It's for everybody. So we really need to get people out there using the, the facility and getting it actually in use. And I think once we get the use and the, uh, the public sees what Butson Complex is, this is going to allow these gentlemen to get it from A to B to C to D as the uh, program shows. So what, what we're basically doing is communicating to you guys is that we've got the 590, $590,000 that's been approved by council for this project. 
And this fall, we're going to take $400,000 of it and we're going to do phase zero, which should be very exciting for all of us, our constituents, our kids, and, and people in the community and, and outside our borders. And it's gonna bring people because this is gonna be something that's gonna be on the map. It's gonna help bring additional business to our, our community, but it's also gonna help us in a very tough time, which is, you know, unfortunately this COVID situation where right now people need to go outside and have the ability to, you know, use some of that frustration. So in spring, we're gonna have that ability for them to actually start playing and kicking the ball or whatever. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention that this is an exciting time. And I'll let you ask questions to the group. Thank you. If, if, I, just, if I may add real quickly, what, what, as City Administrator Wolf said, what, we would, what we're planning to do is take that plan and actually go out for bids to get competitive pricing on this project. Once we have that all as a package, we will come back to the Public Works Committee um, at that time, present those results, and then um, obviously the motion would be to you know get, get approval at that time if it meets our budget requirements and then send it to the full council for their final authorization. But this evening, we wanted to give you a, you know, a real quick update because things are really progressing fast in terms of the construction season. Uh, you know, this time of the year is, is, is good timing for excavators because they're kind of winding down on road projects and their equipment's becoming available. So I just wanted to share that with you. And um, with, if, if anybody else would like to talk, um, I just wanted, again, just kind of give the committee and everyone an update on this tonight. Uh, anyone have any questions for them at all? I, I, I don't have any specific questions, but I think you, you gentlemen did a wonderful job at explaining everything. And um, I know I'm definitely excited about this project moving forward. And, Every time I drive past the site, when I go visit my folks' house, I'm like, hey, let's get this going, you know? So, <laughs> and I think we all kind of agree on that. So I think we feel thanks, the same. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, I just have a quick comment myself. Is, um, I think to think about playing in spring, I think, is a little ambitious. I know how long it took for the... Uh, Horseman complex, and they actually, I think, I think they had to wait. So you're, you're probably looking at fall, or even possibly the spring after. By the t after, that, that is a possibility. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're a little, a little ambitious. We can be on optimistic, that. though, right? Yes, it's, <laughs> um, but it's good to see something going. I, I did have one question. I didn't see anything on there, and I don't. And it, um, there was no ball field, no, no softball or hard or, or, or baseball fields going to be in this complex at all. I mean, I thought that originally was part of the plan. I, I think that's a distinct possibility because much of phase one and two includes artificial turf and artificial turf is readily adaptable to various types of sports, whether it be baseball, softball. Okay. Um, plus with, with the domes that are uh, as part of phases one and two, uh, that also provides opportunity for those sports as well. And okay. certainly we would contemplate you know, having that as part, not necessarily part of the direct design, but certainly all the fields are transitional and able to be readily adaptable to those things. Okay, okay. thank you. Sure, go ahead. One, one, one of the, the nice things about once this, and you don't see the baseball fields at the Butson Complex is because quite frankly, we use the outfields uh, at Field of Dreams for, for a lot of the activity. So by pulling those soccer fields away from that Field of Dreams, once this complex is built, that opens up those facilities for baseball and softball that much more where there's right now there is a little bit of conflict in terms of use. Okay. But as, as, as Joe was saying, you know, once they get to the phase one the dome, that provides a lot of the winter, all year type of training, indoor training for baseball or softball or multiple sports activities. Okay. There's even a uh, talk about, you know, you know, allowing, you know, some, some golfing, uh, having some academies in there to hit into a net and so forth. So tremendous opportunities is um, what the group is being presented this evening um, and moving forward long term in the future. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone else have any comments? Marcus? Betty? I'm good. Thank you, though. Okay. All right. Mr. Chairman, thank sure. you, and thank you to all of you. <laughs> Sorry, was there a oh, question? I guess. No? Okay. Thank okay. you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I appreciate it all. All righty. Seeing we, so we've exhausted the 
agenda. Next meeting date, September 29th. Move to yeah. adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. Second from Marcus. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We're Aye. adjourned. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.